Finally, let's cover the urea cycle and urea synthesis. The liver is the only organ where urea synthesis occurs. Urea is the major nitrogen excretory product in humans. Urea accounts for 86% of the nitrogen that is excreted from the body. The rest of the nitrogen is eliminated as follows. 4.5% by creatinine, 2.8% as ammonium ions, 1.7% as uric acid, and 5.0% as other compounds. Approximately 30 grams of urea is excreted per day. The amount of urea excreted is dependent on protein intake. The higher the protein intake, the higher the amount of urea synthesis and excretion. Urea synthesized in the liver is transported into the blood and is excreted by the kidney. Krebs and Henselite proposed urea synthesis reaction sequences five years before the elucidation of the TCA cycle. The urea cycle was the first cyclic pathway to be identified. The first two reactions of the urea cycle take place in the mitochondria, while the rest occur in the cytosol. Reaction 1 the formation of carbamoyl phosphate. In the mitochondrial matrix, NH4 plus and bicarbonate condenses in an energy requiring reaction to form carbamoyl phosphate. Two ATPs are used to drive the reaction in a forward direction. One of the terminal phosphates from the ATP is incorporated into the carbamoyl phosphate. This rate limiting and regulated reaction in the urea cycle is catalyzed by carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1, or CPS1. It is present in a very high concentration in liver mitochondria, and its Km for ammonia, which is 250 micromoles, is not much higher than the physiological ammonia concentration. These properties enable the enzyme to effectively remove ammonia quantitatively from its environment. N-acetylglutamate, or NAG, is an obligatory activator of CPS1. There is another type of carbamoyl phosphate synthetase in the cytosol of all cells, called CPS2. This enzyme makes the product carbamoyl phosphate, but is quite different from the CPS1 that is present in the cytosol. It is involved in pyrimidine synthesis, uses glutamine as a substrate, and does not need N-acetylglutamate as an obligatory activator. Reaction 2 the formation of citrulline. Mitochondrial ornithine transcarbamoylase condenses carbamoyl phosphate with ornithine to form citrulline. Citrulline is transported out of the inner mitochondrial membrane so that the subsequent reactions of the urea cycle take place in the cytosol. Reaction 3. The condensation of citrulline with aspartate. The cytosolic enzyme argininosuccinate synthetase catalyzes the condensation of citrulline with aspartate to form argininosuccinate. The energy for this complex condensation reaction is provided by ATP conversion into AMP and pyrophosphate. Furthermore, the pyrophosphate cleavage ensures the irreversibility of the reaction. Reaction 4. The cleavage of argininosuccinate. Argininosuccinate is cleaved by argininosuccinate lyase to form fumarate and arginine. Fumarate is converted to malate, which is further converted to oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate can either enter into gluconeogenesis or be reformed into aspartate by aspartate transaminase to re-enter the urea system. Reaction 5. The formation of urea. Arginine, which contains two nitrogens, one derived from NH4+, and the other from aspartate, is hydrolyzed by arginase, producing urea, and regenerating ornithine. Urea is produced from the guadinium group on the side chain of arginine. The portion of arginine that is originally derived from ornithine is reconverted into ornithine. Ornithine is transported back into the mitochondria in exchange for citrulline, where it can react with carbamoyl phosphate initiating another round of the cycle. In total, the hydrolysis of the four high-energy phosphate groups is required in each cycle. Two are needed to drive the formation of carbamoyl phosphate, 
two ATP to two ADP plus PI, and two for the formation of arginosuccinate, ATP to AMP plus PI. The urea cycle is a disposal pathway, and it is regulated at the gene level through course regulation, and at the enzyme level through fine regulation. In course regulation. The induction of the urea cycle enzymes occurs 10 to 20 fold in response to conditions that require increased protein catabolism, such as a high protein diet or prolonged fasting or starvation when the delivery of the amino acids or ammonia to the liver rises. In both of these conditions, as amino acid carbon is converted into glucose, amino acid nitrogen is converted into urea. In fine regulation, Regulation by substrate availability is a general characteristic of disposal pathways, such as the urea cycle, which removes toxic compounds from the body. This is a type of feed-forward regulation, in contrast to the feedback regulation characteristic of pathways that produce functional end products. The major regulatory enzyme of the urea cycle is carbamoyl phosphate synthetase one, which is subject to allosteric activation by N-acetylglutamate, or NAG. The synthesis of NAG by acetyl-CoA and glutamate is catalyzed by N-acetylglutamate synthase. N-acetylglutamate synthase is activated by arginine. NAG is an obligatory activator of CPS1. The only known function for NAG is to be an activator for CPS1. Thus, as acetyl-CoA, glutamate, and arginine levels increase within the liver, two important reactions are stimulated. The first is the synthesis of NAG, which increases the rate at which carbamoyl phosphate is produced. The second is to produce more ornithine via the arginase reaction, so that the cycle can operate more rapidly. The Krebs cycle links the urea cycle with the TCA cycle. The formation of fumarate in reaction number four is converted to malate, which in turn is converted to oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate can condense with acetyl-CoA to form citrate, the first intermediate of the TCA cycle. During fasting and starvation, alanine is the major amino acid transported from the skeletal muscle to the liver, where its carbon skeleton is converted into glucose by gluconeogenesis and its amino group is converted into urea. The carbon skeletons of two molecules of alanine are required to generate one molecule of glucose. Nitrogen from two molecules of alanine entering into the urea cycle as NH4 plus and glutamate will make one molecule of urea.